and welcome to Avoiding Big Brother. In today's video, I want to cover a little more on Wireshark. This is an app used for penetration testing, but in the wrong hands can also be used for illegal hacking. More on that later. I'll include in today's video a brief demonstration of Wireshark and a look at the application. Let's first discuss what Wireshark is and what it is used for. Wireshark is known as a packet sniffer. There are many of these programs around, such as TCP Dump and SolarWinds Deep Packet Inspection, to name a few. But Wireshark is a popular packet sniffer that is pre-installed on Kali Linux, the penetration testing distribution. So as a network packet capture tool, you can capture and analyse packets in real time and save packets for offline analysis also. It can assist network managers and engineers in filtering and zooming in on root issues that may be causing problems for a network and it is also a big help when it comes to network security as well. Wireshark will grab entire streams of traffic passing through a network. The security analyst can use the app to filter and dissect the traffic to obtain information or narrow down on specific data. It allows the analyst to delve deep into the network and analyze communications. This might be internally on a local network or external communications with a web server, for example. Analysts will use Wireshark to trace connections and analyze suspect packets. It can also be used to identify bursts of traffic that may seem unusual and to help an analyst trace where the traffic is coming from. This packet sniffer is used by many organizations in multiple industries to analyze and troubleshoot networks. Analysts using Wireshark need a good understanding of network protocols, including TCP, UDP, DNS, DHCP, and ICMP. A common problem that can be identified by Wireshark is slow traffic that could be caused by a fault in a router's configuration. This could be affecting internet traffic through IP version 6, ICMP, Internet Message Control Protocol, and connections to a website is really slow. Once identified, the analyst can correct the configuration of the router. Unfortunately, as Wireshark is an open source app and free to use, the bad guys are also using this packet sniffer to assist with cyber attacks. Attackers can use Wireshark to track the conversations taking place on a network. Any networks that are insecure, where unencrypted packets are passing through, provides an opportunity for a hacker. Hackers will analyze the packets passing between clients and servers. They look for unencrypted packets that may contain sensitive information. If no encryption protocol is in place, then the packet may reveal information such as login credentials, financial transactions, credit card data, private and confidential messages, and emails. An example of unsecure packets would be interaction between a client and a server where only HTTP protocol is being used and therefore the packet does not have encryption. The packet includes login details where the user of the client logged into an account. The credentials are displayed in plain text form. Using encrypted protocols such as HTTPS, SSH and SFTP, although much better for security, does not give complete protection from a hacker using Wireshark. If the hacker was able to get hold of the private cryptographic key, they will be able to use Wireshark as it allows the user to enter private keys. Using Wireshark, the hacker analyzes the packet and reveals the payload in plain text form using the key. Packet sniffers are a popular application used by hackers who like to carry out the activity known as war driving, where they drive around in a car using antennas and software to identify unsecure Wi-Fi networks in a neighborhood. Once they have connection to the network, they can use an app like Wireshark to analyze its traffic. So what steps can be taken to protect networks? Organizations and individuals can protect themselves from packet capture by using Ethernet networks and avoiding public Wi-Fi. They can make sure that encrypted protocols are used, such as HTTPS and SFTP. And they can use virtual private networks to encrypt data and hide IP addresses. So I'm going to take a look at Wireshark. I am in Kali Linux on a virtual machine. So let's head to the menu. And we had for sniffing and spoofing. And there we can see Wireshark. Just wait for this to load. So we're going to capture packets on the local network. That's F0 Ethernet. 
and now we're capturing packets in real time. So we're going to look at some interactions as an example in this video. I'm going to fire up Firefox and head to YouTube and we'll show some interactions between the local network and the YouTube web server. Let's just go back to the capturing. Let that go on for a bit. Just as a recap, I showed this application in the video on wiretapping. And as you can see, we've got a sequence of the packets. I'll just stop the capturing now. So there's the number in the sequence. You've got the time, how, much, how long that communication took. You've got the source IP address, the destination IP address, the protocol involved, so that's TCP or UDP, DNS. And you've got information on things like whether there's encryption involved and other information that will be useful for an analyst. And these are communications, as you can see, to and from the local network. You can then click on one of these packets and analyze it. There is information in the window below here in the screen, but you can actually open this into a new window and take a look what's in that packet. And obviously, if this was one of the bad guys using this, they'd be looking for anything sensitive that might be exposed in this window pane here. Looking for any information there, sensitive data, credentials. But as a security analyst, they'd be looking at things like the transmission control protocol. They'd be looking at how it communicates, the ports used. And other information like the sequencing and the time it took for the communication, the timestamps. So they're basically looking for anything that might be exposed or anything that's unusual and then they can troubleshoot. So we've stopped the capturing. As you can see there's a, a filter and this is what analysts can do to filter down specific communications. They might be looking by specific protocols. There's loads of filters that can be used. I was looking at it off camera. Let's head to YouTube now in Firefox and start capturing packets that will show the interactions between the local network and YouTube's web server and any other servers that may be involved as well, especially if it's domain certificates. So let's just head back to Wireshark. If we start the capturing again, So we've started capturing again. I'll just refresh the YouTube page so it starts from the beginning again. So let's take a look. Let that capture some packets for a moment. So some of these will be interactions, as you can see there's OCSP, that's Online Certificate Status Protocol. So the local network uh, through Firefox will be fetching those certificates from web responders to authenticate the YouTube website. So let's go ahead and filter that, let's filter the OCSP as our first example of, of filtering through these captured packets. So in the apply a display filter, we'll type in that protocol. As you can see, that pops up there. Let's enter that. And now we've filtered down to just the packets that involve that protocol. So these are interactions between the local area network and the servers, and these are the web responders that will hold these certificates that authenticate YouTube. So this is like your SSL certificates. It authenticates the website, 
shows that uh, it's a secure website, it's not malicious, it's not a spoof, it's the official website. As you can see in the packet as we open one of these requests, it's showing that request is being made through Firefox because you're using the Firefox web browser that is sending the request to the servers that hold those certificates. And then you can also see here that there are responses. Let's go ahead and look at one of these responses, this last one. And as you can see here, if we scroll down, it's online certificate status protocol, scroll across. Just showing you some coding. This might well include encryption and information from that server. And here's another filter now for TCP. There's lots of filters as you can see. A lot of these I won't know much about. I've only got to use in Wireshark recently. So let's do another filter here. Let's filter by IP address. Now this could be quite useful for an analyst who may have a suspicious IP address that's popped up. Maybe there's a lot of traffic coming from that IP address. It requires investigation. So they could use a filter like this. So let's show an example here. Let's pick that IP address at the bottom, the destination there. So IP dot address two equal signs and then we'll enter the IP address 172.217.169.10 Now you could filter that down to just that packet. Let's go and have a look at this packet now. And now we've got information. This is showing that it's port 443. So this uh, may be communications between YouTube. It's showing that it's encryption. It's HTTPS. And there you wouldn't be able to see any exposed data unless the hacker was able to get hold of the cryptographic key. So at the moment nothing is available in plain text. So let's look at Wireshark. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.